Hello. As most of you would know, the federal government is proposing to deregulate uh, university fees. And as it can be expected, if the budget goes through, this uh, decision is going to have significant impact uh, on the lives of uh, many people, especially those from uh, uh, low economic backgrounds, because it is expected that uh, more than likely the uh, deregulation of fees will uh, um, result into higher uh, fees, and that will mean a great deal of uh, young people uh, wanting to go to university are not going to be able to do so. And as we know, there are a lot of uh, uh, young Africans uh, who may be from that group, especially those from a uh, refugee background. I have with me uh, today two young men. Uh, I'll give them the opportunity to introduce themselves. Uh, hello, I'm uh, Leon Kalumba. I'm John Cleland. All right, Leon and John are both students at uh, Monash University. Yeah. And today we're going to be talking about uh, the proposed uh, university deregulation. Uh, even though, as we speak, uh, you know, it may not necessarily go through, but uh, this is something that uh, the government is proposing. And if it doesn't go through uh, this time, probably next time, we're just going to talk about how this uh, uh, proposition is likely to impact uh, students uh, from different backgrounds. We'll start with you, uh, uh, Leon. Do you think uh, this proposal is a good idea? Uh, well, personally, I don't think it's beneficial for the majority of the population. Uh, especially people from lower socioeconomic backgrounds. Um, it kind of puts them one step backwards uh, and puts them at a disadvantage in that uh, the proposal will, will eventually allow for privatisation of universities. John, what, what, what's your take on it? Uh, I'd, I'd have to agree with Leon. I think it, uh, it, it tends to benefit students from uh, higher socioeconomic backgrounds mm. um, and uh, it, it, it really puts those who are already struggling as students uh, financially at a disadvantage. All right. Now, the, the government, uh, however, say that um, it's likely to increase competition, which is a good thing. What do you think? Uh, well, personally, I would have to disagree with that model. It's similar to the United States model and this kind of neoliberal idea that um, let smaller governance will mean more private, uh, will mean more competition through privatization in that privatization means investors will be able to put in more money mm -hmm. and the government put places less money, it's less of a burden on the government. I don't disagree it will increase um, competitiveness but I disagree that it will be beneficial for students in that uh, there will be a lot of low-ranked universities. So mm -hmm. probably what we'll see, similar to the United States, is mm -hmm. Ivy League universities, high-level universities with all this money pumped into them, mm -hmm. and then just growing disparities in the types of education and a uh, continuation and even a greater um, gap. gap in the kind of class system. Mm -hmm. All right. And, and, and John, uh, do you share that uh, view as yeah, well? Yeah, it's, it's not the right kind of competition yeah, yeah, we want to yeah, be yeah. seeing. Mm -hmm. We want to be seeing the kind of competition, as Leon mentioned, uh, uh, with the ATAR system yeah, and yeah. things like that. Mm. Um, this competition that the federal government's uh, mentioned is is more so a type of competition that uh, is, is based on one's financial mm. position more than anything else. Mm. And that's going to be a shift from the Australian system that has been quite fair yes, so far, certainly. and and that's certainly uh, going towards the United States system. However, uh, I guess the, the, the motivation from the government is to try to l lessen the burden from the government mm -hmm. uh, perspective. Do you, do you think this is more of uh, just a budget thing or it's an ideological thing? From the government, I, I, I think it's uh, it's it's a bit of both, yeah. but uh, more than anything else, I think it's uh, it stems from an ideological standpoint within the Liberal Party mm. uh, that is fundamentally flawed. Mm. Um, I, I think there are a lot of ways you can fix the budget um, without harming uh, students at risk. Mm. Mm. Yeah, hey, uh, I would agree with John and. I'd add to that, like, um, how necessary is surplus in the economy um, if the population has to endure such great hardships, you know? Um, you ha 
even if we look at Australia, a country with a small population mm. and uh, a deficit which relative to the rest of the world isn't too bad, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, maybe 12% compared to the United States, 100%. Mm. So we can still cater for the population and at the moment we've got quite a decent standard of education mm. at tertiary level uh, compared to many other countries. So. Well, and, and um, the, um, the reading of uh, the budget being proposed is that young people are really uh, losing a lot uh, if this budget goes through. Uh, is, that, is that your view, uh, John? Do, do you think that yeah. it's going to be happening? Yeah. Um, I, uh, personally, uh, for people like Leon and me, uh, we aren't necessarily uh, uh, <clears throat> at the, the bottom tier of financial struggle, but... Um, we both know th there are lots and lots of students that mm. are going to see, yeah, and and they they're going to have to say goodbye to university and, and any hope of higher education and and a job thereafter. Um, do you think that um, to some extent it's going to be inevitable as the government uh, struggles with these budget things and 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 the world economy? Uh, isn't doing all, all, all that well. It may not go for this time, but that, that's where we had it, definitely. Well, um, I, I believe that if we look at the Scandinavian model, um, mm. they've really catered uh, for the public sector. They've subsidised a lot in the health industries, um, education, transportation. Mm. So I just believe Australia, a middle power country, um, should take more of a Scandinavian approach, which has a significantly less po which have significantly less populations. Mm. However, we've stem we've attempted to steer more towards the right and taken mm. the United States approach of further privatizing and which is not necessarily those ideas of wealth trickling down are not necessarily beneficial for society or beneficial for the economics as we've mm. seen in the United States. Yeah. That gives us also an opportunity to just talk uh, from a young young person's perspective. Uh, you guys are doing your university studies. Um, what what are some of the struggles that uh, you guys are going through? Um, I think that for us, um, perhaps there there aren't a lot of struggles compared to to the the poorest students we're talking about. Mm. But I, I we know that for. Um, for a textbook, mm. for example, the average cost is is 60, above yeah. above a hundred dollars, yeah. something like that. Mm. Um, one has to consider travel to university, mm. accommodation, uh, food, all all these things uh, accumulate into mm. um, a real financial predicament that that majority of students are really going to struggle with if mm. the federal government goes through with this. You want to add something? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, like if you even look at the percentages of students at uh, the universities like Melbourne and Monash who come from private schools, mm -hmm. uh, Monash I think it's something like 80% and um, Melbourne is something like 95%, mm -hmm. if you correct me if I'm wrong. So the rest of the students who are from lower socioeconomic backgrounds, obviously, mm -hmm. they went to public schooling or from rural areas, mm -hmm. they get scholarships. Um, some of them uh, are, or do it all fine, but others really struggle, you know, and even for the international students, they're yeah. almost treated like cash cows. It's mm -hmm. really difficult for them to even get much to eat. All right. Uh, what sort of recommendations sir, would you, I mean, if you had a chance to speak to Joe Hockey, uh, what, what would you uh, tell him uh, in a few words why he shouldn't uh, go ahead with, with this proposal? I'd, I'd ask him, I'd strongly ask him to, to reconsider uh, where he's getting his money from uh, to repair this budget. Um, there's, you know, that we've got companies like Rio Tinto that are uh, making billions and billions of dollars and, and perhaps they're not being taxed enough, some might say. Mm. Um, it, it seems that uh, this budget is, is targeting those who who need to be targeted the least mm -hmm. um there are there are countless uh, uh super wealthy people in australia uh, gina reinhardt i mean to, <laughs> things like that I, to to take away the education from um students who are already struggling up 
I just I, I'd have no words for Joe Hockey. And, and it's interesting. We saw the video yeah. that circulated yesterday when he was student. He was protesting about yeah, exactly. uh, uh, fees. Then now he is a treasurer. He's uh, it, 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 it's a different story. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what would you tell him? Uh, you know, I'd say something silly to Johnny. He'd give him a smack. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say something to Johnny. <laughs> um, similar to Johnny. Um, the budget is really attacking the people who need to be uh, attacked the least. It's uh, and it's really a, a it's a real problem because we see things like. Um, uh, Joe Hockey, uh, what that video that was released by Joe Hockey mm. involved in student activism. So that's something, as a student, he was able to relate and identify with the problems of being a student. Mm. And now that he's in office, he's kind of detached himself away from those struggles and not representing the people mm. he should be representing anymore. Yeah. So I tell Joe Hockey, um, I'd be urging him to look at the people that he should be representing and that uh, making it more difficult to access great education will not be beneficial to a nation at L all. Long term it's going to be a problem because yeah. uh, uh, Oswala can't compete anymore on manufacturing yeah. or, 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 yeah. or stuff like that. It has to be on the you know uh, brain power level. Yeah. Good. Well, um, I'm, I'm really enjoying this conversation. I would like to be able to continue. Unfortunately, we're running out of time. Uh, but I would like to uh, uh, invite you guys for further uh, opportunities to, to talk about uh, some of these things that uh, we've touched on today. We'd love to. Uh, and I really want to appreciate your time to Africa Media Australia. I remind our audiences here, Leon Kalumba and John Cleland uh, are both students at Monash University. And uh, they have... Uh, come to talk to us about uh, their their experience and their point of view with regards to the proposal uh, from the federal government uh, to deregulate universities. Uh, thank you very much for watching Africa Media Australia. Until next time, God bless.